Well, what's up, guys? Hope you're feeling alive right now. I'm Micah Keneally. I'm Josiah Keneally. Welcome to the Young Adults Today podcast. Happy Monday. We are your hosts, and we're fired up to talk about all things about the faith of the next generation and reaching young adults in our world today. We consider it a gift. Anytime mm -hmm. you leave a rating, a review, subscribe, or share this episode, it helps us reach more listeners with the message of Young Adults Today. And we're joined today by our friend, Joshua Cackley. What's up, man? Hey guys, how's it going? We're doing great. It is Monday here in North Dakota, or Min I hope said North Dakota, oh my gosh, Minnesota, that's where I live now, holy cow. And we are not 80 today, which feels like fall, so it's a little confusing to me. So for the listener, this will be airing probably more or less in the fall, but we are so thrilled that you were tuning in this Monday, and we just love Pastor Josh, Joshua, whatever you want to call him, Josh or Joshua, and his lovely wife and just his family of four that's going to be arriving soon. And we just admire you and your leadership. And we've known you for a, maybe a, what, a year or two already? Mm -hmm. Known mm -hmm. of you, but getting to know you even more as just like yeah. friends. And it's been so fun to see you're like this this hidden gem that we never knew about. So we're fun. We're having fun. And we're just going to hopefully tackle some of your story today. Uh, for the listener who may not know you, can you just share who you are, where you've come from, just why you, why and how you were called to young adult ministry at large, and just give us a little glimpse into your life? Yeah, definitely. I mean, first, thank you guys for letting me come and uh, partner with you guys and just, yeah, talk about ministry and life. And, um, you know, you say a hidden gem that we never knew about. I think sometimes the hidden gems are the transplants uh, from other regions. So, um, yeah, no, just a quick recap of my life. Uh, was born in New Mexico, moved to South Louisiana, grew up there basically, um, went to college in Northeast Louisiana and West Monroe for those who know about Duck Dynasty and, and all of the beards, but uh, that was their place. And yeah, I met my uh, wife, Robin, um, there in, in school. We uh, finished school, lived in Little Rock, Arkansas for about three years, um, doing a really just working for the Assemblies of God district office there and uh, and just serving in the local church and knew that ministry was in our lives, but just, you know, wasn't really sure what that looked like uh, yet or where we were going. And then um, just a series of events ended up going to Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, and uh, we were there for about a year and a half working with a church plant there. Um, and that would be where we first, I think, got our glimpse of young adults ministry. Um, when I went to college, I actually went with the desire to do youth ministry and thought like, I'm going to go be the best youth pastor I can possibly be, have an incredible youth ministry. Um, and it's crazy what the Lord does because I've yet to do youth ministry. <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah, so it was just really, <clears throat> the Lord took us on a really crazy journey. And um, our time in Arizona, you know, we walked through a little bit of a rough season there and, and, uh, and it's just amazing the faithfulness of the Lord. And, um, you know, I applaud anybody that does church plant life. Cause man, you, it is a, it is a journey and, and, uh, and, you know, and life kind of just chewed us up, spit us out a little bit, but then, um, you know, we thought, well, we'll just be good Christian people and, and love the Lord and serve the church. And, um, the Lord still had other plans and, uh, walked us through a season of healing and restoration. And, and then, uh, without us ever even realizing or considering it just went, okay, like still have the call of ministry on your life too. Mm -hmm. and, um, so tons of moved here to Minnesota six months later, um, our lead pastor announced that he was transitioning to another church and, and then walked through that transition and, uh, came to a place with pastor Mike, uh, stare here as our lead pastor and, um, walked up to me one day and just said, Hey, Josh, I, I believe there's still a call of ministry on your life. Um, and, uh, and I think the, that there's a door open here for that. And so, yeah, we stepped into the young adults pastor role, um, been doing that for about a year and a half now. And, um, man, the Lord's just been faithful and blessed it and, um, just, seeing growing and learning and uh and seeing people's lives get changed more importantly and that's been the huge the huge blessing for us lately so yeah and like you said we got uh two little ones due in about two weeks at this point right now two to three weeks now uh it's a little it's, it's actually kind of real <laughs> before yeah. that it was just like yeah like oh yeah we're gonna have kids and now 
now they're like they're like hey so they're actually coming uh, installed car seats for the first time together well and uh, that was that was a uh, that was a journey in itself <laughs> your bag packed yes well done uh, that that is ready to go if this episode um gets cut short only the lord knows time will tell but we'll do a part two if we need to so if you gotta run no explanation needed no. <laughs> um and but let me ask you this is minnesota do you feel like minnesota's home now you guys have been here a couple years you know i, I would have six months ago i probably would have said like we love it but i don't know if it's home and then over just like the last six months man it, uh yeah it's just felt more at peace like um, I think just our, Robin and I's natural tendency is just to be like, what's next? Where are we going? You know, if you look at our track record of the places we've lived, you're like, these people just are on the move. Um, and, uh, and lately we've just been like, no, or it's, this feels good. Like, let's hang here for a minute and, um, mm -hmm. and just, you know, obviously follow the Lord. Right. But like, let's just enjoy this place. And so, yeah, I feel like we've really developed like, family here and uh and just yeah just been excited to see like we're ready to see what the lord has in store here so thanks for sharing that josh i love that even transplants start feeling like home i think mm -hmm. of just like an organ transplant it's foreign at first but mm -hmm. your your body adapts god yeah. plants us in a new place and it feels uncomfortable and it's weird and we feel like we're the awkward odd man out and then we start taking root and it starts feeling a little more like home and then we settle for a while or God picks us up and moves us somewhere else. But even for the listener who doesn't know uh, the Minnesota area, you are in Rochester overseeing the young adult ministry there, as Sweet well as church. you serve as one of our like committee members and volunteers um, essentially for the state of Minnesota, just helping do what we get to do to serve Minnesota state, like at large from like yeah. the weekend to planning some fun things. And it's been so fun to get to know you. And hopefully that, you feel at home with that too. And so if you're listening, you're a young adult pastor or leader, like there are opportunities that you might not even know about. Cause I remember Josh, you had said, I guess it was 2022. 20, you had said to one other leader, like, I would love to like serve alongside Mike and Josiah and help plan this. And little did you know, little did we know what, like 10 yeah, months later, later, we're like, later. yo, Josh, like you've been on our radar, whether you know it or not. And, and would you just want to come alongside and, and help us build this and just be a teammate to us? And I don't know. I just love that you were able to share elements of your story for like the pastor who's been traveling, who's been going place to place and is truly starting to take root. And you had this realization when you were down in Arizona, that young adult ministry. Wow. I thought youth, yeah. well, youth was where I was going to go, but God's calling me here. So for the person maybe who is wrestling and struggling with maybe even responding to young adult ministry and it's on their heart and on their yeah. radar, how would you encourage them to take that leap, but also speak into the process of why is reaching the 18 to 30 year old so vital in this day and age? Yeah, no, I think uh, for me personally, it was just this aspect of like, just really understanding like our idea of ministry even at that point, like at probably one of like the most challenging places for me to live and like loved Arizona, love the mountains. Right. But like life was hard. And I was like, Lord, I'm trying to follow you, but like, I don't get this. Right. Um, realizing like that young adults ministry breathed life into us. Um, and there was something so significant for us that like these people genuinely wanted to know the lord like i love youth ministry i think it's so vital and important and it sets young adult ministry up so like well to like when we do it well right but like there was something different about these young adults who are like far from home on a university campus yeah making the choice for themselves to say what i have right now isn't enough mm -hmm. and like and I want to know the truth. Right. And, and uh, yeah. So for anyone that like, I would say like, you're just like, it's in, you know, maybe you, cause like that wasn't our plan. When we went to Arizona, we, we were hired on to be the executive pastors, associate pastors there and uh, help with the staff. And, and then the next thing we know, we showed up and they're like, Hey, so we're also going to have you like run the young adults ministry. And I was like, I don't know the first thing about it. Like, I'm not, I don't know the lingo. I Nobody don't know. does. Like, right. <laughs> like, I'm like, 
yeah it's like i'm just straight up playing catch up and uh half the time i feel like they were just screwing with me on things that were like up to date and i was just like um but i would just say for the for the individual maybe your lead pastor just said hey i want you to run with this um trust the process like the process of ministry was i don't i don't believe was ever allocated to a certain demographic age Mm -hmm. or title Mm -hmm. like our lives like as believers you know if we want to just throw the trump card right like we're all called to minister Mm -hmm. and our lives should be that and we should reflect that but there's something so significant and i'm a little biased because this is what i do full-time right but like there's something so significant when you have a 25 26 year old who's in the who's in the marketplace in corporate America and they come to you and they go, you know, the Lord's just really challenged me to dig in the word. And they start bringing things out of the word that like, I haven't one thought of or even recognized before. And you're just like, wow, like the spirit of God is like doing something new and real in people. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a, a temporary phase of, well, I'm going to try out religion for a minute. Like lives are actually being changed, you know? And, uh, and so, yeah, I think it's, a, it's vital. It's important. Um, it's also, I think what shapes our churches, uh, you know, the truth is, is like, if, if every 18 to 30 year old falls away from their faith, mm. you know, statistically speaking, like we, you know, I can't pull any top, top of my head. Like you read statistic after statistic that say like, from the ages of like 18 to 35, the average attendance drops, right? Like, and that's been really our heart and our goal and our prayer with, um, with Rochester young adults is like, Lord, help us to help create a a generation of young adults that have longevity in their faith. So good. That from like 20 years old to 80 years old, there's no break in between in their walk. Like there's no, like I had to go discover myself for, for 20 years or I got a career and pushed the Lord to the side or I got married and we just had to figure out our own way. Right. Like it was just, it like shapes like the health and the impact of the church um, for like the future tense and for the generations that are coming behind them. But I love that. It's, it's so am- good. It's amazing. It is vital. It's, it's so important. And I, would love to hear your thought on this in and it's um we just had the weekend at the time that we're recording this in may and i mean what a cool opportunity churches coming together young adults lifting up the name of jesus exploring asking questions about mm-hmm. faith and god yeah. and existence and adulting but growing in that godly community what was a highlight or two mm-hmm. or story or two maybe even a testimony coming out of that weekend um man one it was so cool for us uh you know i think the greatest fear that i ever have with a ministry is like when people start to click up right and you're like oh the dreaded clicks and like one of the coolest things that we saw was when we opened up registration and and started like pushing that for our young adults the group of people that we brought um was so diverse in friendship Mm. Um, whether it was career basis whether it was ethnicity whether it was um just how long they've been here or who they typically hang out with like these people it was just cool to see like our prayer and hope for this ministry has been like lord let it just be a community of believers that has no has no rules of who goes where and hangs out with who and like um yeah and it was just so cool like I mean, we had people that have never even attended our young adults ministry, just all of a sudden be like, Hey, like I heard you guys are going on a retreat. Can I come, <laughs> you know? And, um, but then also just to see like, just the Lord build trust among people, um, where I don't really feel like we see it. Like we don't see people fall in or step into a community and like trust that it'll be good. And, uh, and so it was really cool to just to watch people talk with each other, love each other, encourage each other, um, and not at one point have to fear like, oh, are these people going to get along or, um, 
And then a really cool testimony is just, we had this young man, uh, hasn't been in our ministry for very long. Uh, and I didn't really know a whole lot about him. Um, just come up to me and, and I kind of told you guys about this, but just said, Hey, you know, the, the truth is, is he was like, ah, Josh, I, I never really thought this before or considered it, but, um, I just realized like, I got to quit doing drugs. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, like I do a lot of drugs and I, you know, I'm like, wow, you, you don't seem like it. Um, but he's just like, but I feel like this is the first time like God's ever spoken to me. And I've like, he's like, I've come because I love the idea of like church and like the community here and people are so kind. He's like, but this is the first time I feel like I've had like a personal encounter with the Lord. And, uh, you know, and that just like wrecked me. I was like, man, like, Lord, thank you. Like if any of all of this was worth it, it was like worth that one guy. And, uh, you know, another testimony is a young woman in our group that I had no idea she was adopted, um, has never met her birth parents. Um, and, uh, and the Lord just spoke to her about just like the freedom, like that she has family, you know, and, and she loves her parents, her adopted parents and everything, but she's always been so afraid to tell her story, um, because of what people might think or assume, or, you know, will I fit in? And, uh, or my story doesn't look like everybody else's, right? And uh, it was just so cool for the Lord to just move on her life and like bring healing. Like, you know, she's like, I know I have great adopted parents, but like, I've still felt just unwanted, you know, and, and battled with that. And so the Lord just bringing healing to that and freedom. So, man, it's just an incredible weekend for us. Like the spirit of God moves. That's always, man, when the presence of God in the room, everything else is cool, right? <laughs> but um, but yeah, so it was, it was so much fun. Praise God. For us, mm -hmm. our prayer really open-handedly mm -hmm. is like, God, would you use a weekend for young adults each May? Would you help accomplish a year or more's work of your ministry mm -hmm. in the lives of young men, in the lives of young women, so that they can grow in their faith, so they can have encounters with God. Yeah. And I think that there's something powerful when we go together and, and there is strength in numbers with that, but at the same time, there, it's just a little bit away from the buzz and ringing and dinging of life, mm -hmm. yeah. change of pace, change of place. Like Batterson says, and it's amazing to watch God show up. It's amazing to, the messages weren't really about drugs or adoption. And yet yeah. this was the lives and the yeah. Holy spirit speaking to individual ministering to individual needs. And those are just two stories of a couple hundred young adults who all have the opportunity to get away and meet with God. And so thanks for sharing those. I hope my hope for the leader listening is that if mm -hmm. you're in Minnesota, come next May to the weekend and bring a group. Oh, if yeah. you're in the Midwest, you're welcome as well. And if you're in a community, um, check it out. See if other mm -hmm. churches or young adult ministries in your area link together for something like this. And maybe if there's nothing in your state, district, area, region, maybe this is an opportunity for you to start something. And if you want help in any way, our team would love to be mm -hmm. a resource if we can, an encouragement if we can. But I just think that it's so, so exciting. Um, next May, we're already mm -hmm. planning it the weekend. And what I hear, or what I heard you say, Pastor Joshua, is that it's powerful for the individual who's a young adult, age 18 to 30 to get away, but it can be a catalyst and a rallying point for a ministry to have a shared experience away like this. Mm -hmm. And we talked about one weekend, but just as far as practical, nitty gritty, day to day, young adult ministry in Rochester. How have you guys structured your young adult ministry? You know, we even uh, literally just last night met with our leadership team and uh, and just had a quick little rundown of like, hey guys, what are we doing that's that's working? What do we need to change? What are you know? Um, and uh, and just dream together. Like, what are some opportunities? Like, what are some things that we can um, look at and just see like the Lord move and, and be in. And, um, and it was so encouraging because, you know, as pastors, like we realize, hopefully we realize really quickly, I, I don't have all the great ideas. I don't know the best things to do, nor do I have the time to, to do all of it. Right. And, um, so one of the biggest things I think we, the way we've structured, structure our young adults ministry is, uh, we actually have three, uh, 
three uh, statements, which is um, Jesus is our focus. Uh, we've got to focus on Jesus. Like he's the author and finisher. He's the, he's the, the salvation point, the gateway, right? Like, um, so Jesus is our focus. Community is our priority. How do we manage and keep healthy community? Um, how do we protect healthy community? How do we develop that? And then the third being eternity is our mindset. Wow. And, uh, and when we, and when we operate on all three of those bases, you know, there it's the whole thing of like major in the majors, minor in the minors, things are going to ebb and flow. Uh, we're going to try an outreach and it may not work or it may be a huge success, right? Like, I think for me, I'm a really type A, like structured guy. I love to have like every detail lined out. Uh, but the Lord just really helped teach me like, hey, Joshua, you got to love people. You got to give them a safe space to come and grow and learn. And uh, and you got to teach them how to think with an eternal perspective. He's like, and all of the other things, he's like, you just got to leave it up to me and and guide people and, and love them on their journey and, and realize like, it's not going to be everyone's at level one and progresses at the same rate or same time. And, um, and so, yeah, our, our heart as the young adults ministry has just been to create a safe space for people to come. Um, one of the biggest things I love to tell people is uh, if Jesus isn't afraid of your questions, then neither am I. Um, so if you have a question that you go, Hey, I don't know if I agree with this, Like, can you help me understand? Come ask it. If I don't know the answer, guess what? I know a lot of other smart people and more experienced that we can go to and, and find out together. Right. Um, so yeah, our structure has really just been like, um, how do we create an atmosphere where people can experience the presence of God, chase after Jesus, walk with him, uh, learn how to have relationship with the Lord. Right. I don't want you to come in and have this firework experience. And then it's, it's big and pretty and it's loud, but it's done after 30 seconds. Like, how do you have walking daily relationship with the Lord? And, um, and so, yeah, we just experienced that, explore it, walk together in it, ask questions. And, uh, and then, and then outside of that is our, our biggest goal is, you know, I think for most young adult ministries, we are an extension of the church. Right. And, and so, um, I don't want, I don't want to have a ministry that looks like its own church and looks like its own thing. Like, um, our structure is how do we serve the vision, uh, of our lead pastor and, and of Rochester assembly as a whole. And, um, are we teaching young adults how to integrate from adolescent mindsets and integrate into a, a serving and, and contributing capacity in the church? Um, and so that's, you know, do I know all the details of how to get that work? I don't know that if I figured it out yet. Um, and we're trying and we're doing our best, but yeah. And just, I think the main thing is, man, just loving people mm -hmm. right where they're at. I don't, you know, if you, if you're 28 and you're, you know, still trying to figure out what you want to do the rest of your life. Cool. If you're, you know, here in Rochester, we got mighty Mayo and there's some, I've got, we've got some young adults who are working on their PhDs. And I'm like, I, who are you? How did you figure that out? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but the best thing we can do is just give them Jesus yeah, and, and be transparent. You know, one of our favorite things, uh, a couple of pastors, um, Mike Todd and, and, uh, he says this, he, he says, you know, we like to keep it hot, honest, open and transparent. And, and I think that's another structure and an aspect of our ministry is I just tell these guys, look, if you want a polished and prim proper pastor, um, you might have to look somewhere else. Um, but what I do want to do is I always want to keep it real with them. You know, I think as pastors, there's a level of maturity where it comes like, you know, when to share and what to share. Right. Um, but letting people know like, Hey guys, there's days when I look at the Lord and I'm like, what are you doing, bro? Like, what is your deal? <laughs> did I, did I upset you or am I missing it? Right. Um, and just allowing people to see like the humanity behind ministry, uh, which is that like, we are all human. We're all people. Mm -hmm. And we do peopleish things, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the way we've really just focused on structuring and and uh, and leading right now. Pastor Josh, I think that's incredible. I took lots of notes of just what you're saying there of your young adult ministry and how you've structured it. it has a mission, it has a vision, it's serving the lead pastor and coming Absolutely. under them. 
And I think you're speaking to a fear of maybe you're a listener and you have a fear as a pastor with your lead that you would become a silo ministry within the church. And I think Pastor Josh, that you were speaking into that right now of just like, let's call a spade a spade. We're not going to play this game. We want to be, we want to collaborate together because there's nothing more beautiful than when you see somebody in youth not like serving necessarily, but a student transition into young adults and then that young adulthood transition into adulting. Like that's if we had them for 10, 15, 20 years, that's if we do. But when you can really understand that we're here to link arms and link generations and ages and stages, all of them matter. But how can it be like a seamless form of living where you said earlier, you don't have to walk away from your faith for 20 years to go on this you know, sabbatical of Jesus just to find out what and who you are, because if you're claiming to be a Christ follower, who you are and what you've designed, what he's designed and created you to do is only discovered by spending time with him. So when we take a break, quote unquote, from him, we really realize and recognize that we're doing ourselves a disservice. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can stay connected. Like you said, like, let's keep it honest, open and transparent. I love that. Jesus is our focus. Community is our priority. Eternity is our mindset. Like, that right there, if that doesn't intrigue the young adult coming through the door for the first time, oh my gosh, you have to say you leaned into at least one of those six things I just said and one of those yeah. things you just shared. So I just think that is so fun. And speaking of the church at large, what are the needs that you're seeing in Gen Z that maybe churches, leaders, and pastors can really begin to understand and minister to versus kind of shy away from? Wow. You know, um, so I've not always really considered myself the most like, you know, there's like some guys who are just like, oh man, I need to know everything about each generation that's come through. Like, you know, and I love that. Cause I'll sit down and listen to those guys be like, cool, here's some points. Um, I think something that I've noticed at least for myself is there, you know, Gen Z, like every generation has their own styles and their own quirks and their own interests. Right their own political agendas or, or, you know, and like, we can always look at those things and examine them. And, um, but I think one of the biggest threats that I personally have really recognized and that I see the church really needing to lean into is there is a genuine like battle and war for the sexual purity of like people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that, that, that war has always existed from the time of, of the old Testament to the new Testament to, to 20, 30 years ago to the hippie movement, right? Like it, that, ha- that war has always existed. And I think that we've, this is by no means like the church needs to do better, right? Like, I think people do the best they can with what they understand and they know. Um, But I think there's a, there's a genuine battle and a war um, going on for the heart of people that I, and I couldn't even explain it to you, but it's like, when you see just like the, the flesh and like the natural, like thirst for sexual identity and like understanding and like, I mean, just the appetite, right. Um, from a spiritual standpoint, I'm just like, I often just sit down like, Lord, how do we, how do we, not only just speak truth and love, but also like go after this. Mm -hmm. Like, because I don't want to just be the gentle hand that goes, Oh no, no, no. Come here. Let me, let me comfort you now that you've, that you've walked through this, but also like, I'm just like, Lord, how do we, how do we come at this? And from a place that loves people, but fights hard against it that like speaks truth that that also comes with like the authority and the love and the grace of of god right and so i think that's for me one of the biggest things that i've just kind of been venturing to is like and asking the lord because i you know i don't know it all um and uh and even asking questions and listening to people who are having conversations about it um a huge help for me lately and uh lots of people have their own opinions and feelings, but there's a podcast called the basement with Tim Ross. And, um, this guy, man, he just, he just goes hard at, at the culture of, of sexual identity and what's right, what's wrong. How do we do it? Right. And, um, 
And it's, you know, I think the biggest thing is like that one, keeping it honest, open and transparent, like allowing space for people to ask why, you know, having young adults ask me, Josh, what's the big deal with sleeping around? You know, like if it only affects me, then why does it matter? You know, and, and just walking through and exploring like, Hey, this is, this is what the word says. This is what the word warns against. This is, and, uh, and I think sometimes we get a little bit too caught up in, in this intellectual's ability to understand or articulate and this pastor's ability to speak to it. And, and I think really venturing and, and bringing people back to like a biblical literacy mm-hmm. and ability to like treasure the word of God, like treasure, like, what does the word say? Now, I know that like that also comes with having relationship with the Lord and like, but I think when people see us live it out and like, and actually live that example, like, man, what would happen in a day where like, we don't have to fear lead pastors or young adult pastors or college ministry pastors having sexual moral failures. Like it almost feels like impossible when I think about it because I've seen it so much in my life, but like what happens if we really took this serious in a way of like, if, if we were to eradicate that just from the church itself, what kind of effect would it have on the world around us? You know? Um, So for me, like, I think that's one of the biggest things to look at is, is just that aspect of like, whether it's millennial, whether it's Gen Z, whether it's Gen Alpha, right? Like, man, these people need the love of Jesus. And And yes, we might have to get uncomfortable and use our Instagram profiles, you know, as grandparents roll around, they might have to figure out how to connect better, right? Like um, for us as pastors, we might have to, you know, wear uncomfortable baggy clothes because it maybe helps us connect, but I don't know, right? Like there are things that you may have to adjust. Um, I believe it's Paul that says, you know, to the Roman, I'm a Roman, to the Jew, I'm a Jew, to the Greek, I'm a Greek, right? Like he says like, Hey, I, I position myself to be able to connect with these people. Not that I look identically and live identically as them, but I position myself to connect with them so that I understand their culture. I understand their, their beliefs. I understand where they're coming from so that I think he just positions himself to effectively share the gospel. Um, And so, yeah, that for me is just kind of lately just been like on my heart. It's like, Lord, how do we help this generation coming up live less confused you yeah. know oh my so gosh good. i'm passionate about what you had just said uh earlier in the conversation you said something to the effect of if jesus isn't afraid of your questions then neither am i mm-hmm. and i love that joshua i love that so much i think of sometimes thomas gets a bad rap or ragged on doubting thomas whatever but yeah. it's really the questions of Thomas asking Jesus something to the effect of, well, how do we know the way? And he brought his questions before mm-hmm. Jesus. And we get the proclamation of the Messiah, kind of that seventh crucial I am statement of Jesus in John 14, that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, that no one comes to the Father except through Jesus. We get that answer because of Thomas's bravery to ask a question. Mm -hmm. And so questions are absolutely vital. I look four uh, or so chapters later, Jesus is brought before the high priest and he's brought before Pilate himself. And this leapt off the pages from John 18, just into my soul and in my spirit. And Jesus is before Pilate and he asks, Pilate asks Jesus, what is truth? Literally. Uh, John 18, 38, what is truth? Retorted Pilate. And I'm like, I, I've never seen that question. I've read the gospel of John many, many times, just about each year. And I'm like, oh my goodness. When when you look at, he's asking, mm-hmm. first of all, the right question, but he's yeah. asking the right person, the right question. And this generation, Gen Z is asking, what is truth? Because some people say, my truth. And some people say, you, you do you boo boo, you come up with your truth. But here is Pilate asking Jesus, what is truth? Mm -hmm. And I think in 2023, 
that question has never been more relevant and asking Jesus that question Mm -hmm. is the absolute best place to go. And two quick other thoughts is, um, you had talked early on at the top of the episode about some church hurt in life, kind of eating you up, spitting you out, so Mm -hmm. to speak. And I I just want to comment that church hurt and traumas are real things. And, um, you know, part of healing is forgiving And that is so, so loaded and so, so easier said than done. Um, I think trusting again, and I've learned in my own journey, Mike and I've learned on our own journey that getting involved serving again, I just want to talk for a second to the young adult or the leader or the pastor who's gone through church hurt, that there is a beauty in, and maybe it's a new state, maybe it's a new church, maybe it's new leaders, but as the Holy Spirit guides us and mm-hmm. leads us into all truth and that next step of healing, I just think that there's something so, so beautiful in the healing process about getting plugged in, about serving again. Mm-hmm. That's so, so healing. It's so, so restorative. The last comment is just on your idea of those three statements that you said. Um, can you say them again? Which one? Uh, with our kind of our ministry. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. 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 Um, Jesus is our focus. Community is our priority and eternity is our mindset. Oh my gosh. You know, I think that a generation, especially Gen Z is cause driven. They mm-hmm. speak the language of vision. Clarity is kind. And so the clearer you can be about what your vision is and you might say, oh my gosh, that resonates with me and I'm going to honorably adopt that. You might get away or talk to your pastor about like, what is our white hot why? You just heard one that's mm-hmm. incredibly compelling. But I'm telling you, friend, that when you call a generation to that, and it's always going to be the message of Jesus, it's mm-hmm. always going to be the mis- mission of Jesus. But contextually, what that looks like in your own words, when you call a generation to that, it is so inviting mm-hmm. and compelling and rewarding. So do that. And we're about to put five minutes on the Ooh, clock okay. and do rapid fire. We call it the five and five. Joshua, are you up for it? I'm ready. I'll I'm kick it to you ready. first. What's God teaching you lately? Um, The Lord, oh, man, this has been, this has really been wrecking me lately, which is uh, ask for help. Um, I had someone recently tell me, you know, Joshua, you have a little bit of a lone ranger mentality. And, uh, and I'd never really thought about it until I, until they said that. Right. And then I'm like, well, yeah, I do. And he was like, you need to learn how to ask people for help. And, uh, and I think even within the generation, the time we live in a culture tells us like, you got to make your success. You got to do what's right. You got to, you it's, it's all on you. Right. Um, you are the author of your story, all of these things. And it's like, the reality is yeah, you might have vision. Yeah, the Lord may put you in a place to lead people, right? But I can't do this on my own. Great example is just ran the 30 for freedom race up there in Bloomington and um, did the full 30 miles. And I'll tell you what, man, the first 14, I thought I've got this. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. 15, mile 15 hit, my body shut down. Um, Mile 19, coming into 20, my wife met me around the corner. I had a moment with her. I was like, I can't do this. She goes, Hey, let me walk a lap with you. Right. And immediately things begin to shift. And the Lord just really spoke to me. He's like, Joshua, he said, you might be able to run a decent amount of distance on your own, but it's going to take community and believers alongside of you to like help you walk. You know, we may have walked 10 or 12 miles of that. I don't even remember. (laughs) But he was like, you may need one person to walk with a lap with you. You may need four other people the next two laps. Like you have to be okay with recognizing I need people with me. And because if we try and run on our own, man, when we fall by ourselves, who's there to pick you up? Mm -hmm. Right? Like who's there to, to go, oh, no, 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 you got it. That I see that hurt a little bit, but like you've got it. So yeah, Lord's just really been teaching me, man you gotta, you gotta be willing to ask for help and, and, and let people, um, partner with you. You want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yeah, that's right. All right. Question number two, Pastor Josh, 
What is the best advice you've ever received? Best advice I've ever received. <laughs> Man, I've, gotten, I've been given a lot of advice. <laughs> um, all right, this goes straight to marriage. This might be a little uh, a little much for some people's ears, but um, it, when I was in school, we had a we had a youth pastor teaching a class, and um, for anybody that's married or or on your way to it, um, he made this statement. He said, um, "Sex is great, but conversation is better." And uh, and basically, what that meant was, yeah, sex in marriage is going to be an awesome experience, and you're going to love it, but it's fleeting and it doesn't last long. And if you can't learn how to have conversation with your spouse, no amount of sex or activities uh, will make that a fulfilling relationship. Um, and, uh, and man, that has just rung true in our, in our lives in our marriage with Robin and I, um, it's like one of the number one things I've been told. And it's just like always stuck in my heart for some reason. Um, and it's just that it's like, man, get to know the person you're living your life with know their their love their desire their their dreams like that is what drives your your relationship and your marriage um through with longevity through the next mm -hmm. 50 years right um, so yeah that's probably one of my favorites that i've been given i think that's so good it helps fuel the flame conversation fuels the flame right phenomenal <laughs> and if you could throw us a curveball we never know these but it keeps us engaged on our toes we're just ready in and out of season so to speak ready for anything if you could ask mike and i a question anything what would you want to know um man i would just say what what do you think what do you see as the most promising things coming out of ministry with young adults lately hmm first i think you touched on some of them like mm -hmm. the hunger the sheer hunger of a generation to meet with god and they're coming they're asking questions and so are we setting the table in a way that um i i just think what's promising is hunger blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they're going to be filled so hunger goes a long way and then i think the curiosity the investigative nature the questions it's amazing. And I think that you see revival sweeping some college campuses on the West Coast. There was just like a few thousand people who um, got water yeah. baptized in baptized SoCal. So there is pockets of revival sweeping our land. And that is really, really fires me up. I know. I was going to say hunger as well, but I would say in addition to hunger, I'll just feed off of that. Just for the leader listening, what is our role when people are hungry? It's to lead them to the table. It's to feed them the breadcrumbs um, to to the buffet. And I think I think I'm challenged in a sense of leadership of like, do I know the word of God? Am I in prayer? Um, if somebody comes to me, am I educating myself with what's going on around the world? And not that I need to have all the answers, but am I up to date on some of these things? And am I madly in love with Jesus? And can they see that in through me as a leader? And am I providing those opportunities for them not to be in a room with me, but like we said, set at a table with other believers. So I think to feed off that hunger, I would, I would ch the challenging thought is what are we feeding them? And if we are feeding them, is it our opinion or is it the word of God? And are we teaching and equipping them to do that? So I think with that question, Pastor Josh, is we have a generation that's ready to be equipped because there's a war going on. It's whether or not we're going to teach them what they need to know to be in the battle of flesh, the battle of spirit, the battle of desire, the battle of redemption. Um, and, and are we, are we going to be leaders that are we equipped ourselves? Are we equipped ourselves to to offer, not to fall on our own sword, but teach somebody else how to sharpen theirs? Because iron sharpens iron, and when something dull is rubbing up something dull, you get even duller. So I would say we're yeah. we're in we're in a day and age where people are hungry and they need to be equipped. And the image that comes with this question is actually, um, what's it called? Not Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. And she's fighting with her aunt mm -hmm. right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that we need to be teaching people like that type of mentality, that type of skill set, warfare. Like, I physically, I'm like, this is my favorite part of the whole episode is when she's learning how to fight. Like, 
do we know yeah. how to fight and are we equipping people because they're in a battle and are they going to curl up on the floor and roll over and wish they were no longer here or are they going to get back up to know the war is won? Yeah. So the hungry need to be fed and the war is on and we need to be, ah, we need to be equipped to do that. We need to have the full armor in the process. So on all those different levels, oh, I'm fired up now. I want to watch Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but here's number four. What yeah. is on your heart for young leaders right now? Young leaders, um, protect the calling. Uh, one of the, another great piece of advice I was given in, in ministry was um, don't compromise. And uh, I had a young, I had a young adult actually walk up to me. I have a tattoo of it and, and he saw it and he goes, He's like, I feel like that's the worst thing you could tell somebody. Like you have to compromise in things of life. And I, and we got into a really conversa good conversation and really just led to the boiling down to like, our world tells us you have to compromise. Mm -hmm. It tells you to, to make your dreams happen, but it also teaches you, you have to compromise to make it happen. That might compromising in relationships that might comp be compromising in your um, morale that might be but in, tor in order to make things happen you have to compromise and uh and i think for young pastors young leaders there's so many questions there's so many um how do you think about this or what are your opinions on this and uh and i would just encourage young leaders you know pastor or not are you living your life in a way that leaves no room for question a great example is daniel when, when you read the story of Daniel and the lion's den and, and it says over and over and over again, no one could find fault in him. No one could find anything to pin against him because he lived with such integrity and he protected the calling. Um, and I think that's just something that feels a little bit old school, a little fire and brimstone teaching, but, but it's so valuable. Like protect the, protect the testimony protect the calling that, that God's put on your life. Um, and you'll just see incredible things happen because of it. Phenomenal. That's good. How we love to close each conversation on young adults today. And today we're with Joshua Cackley from Rochester, Minnesota. And just love to ask you, Pastor Joshua, is if you could leave the listener with one piece of encouragement as they go, as we kind of wrap up, what would you want to share with them today? Um. I would just love, you know, you touched a little bit on like the church hurt and, and, uh, and I, and I'll keep this really short and concise, which is, um, a pastor named, uh, Sam Grosso, um, who you guys know, did this incredible teaching one day and, and it was talking about church hurt. And, um, I really feel like this is where the Lord did. And it's just some amazing work in my heart, in my life. Um, but he made this one statement. He said, um, we as individuals love to just blame everyone else for the wounds that we received, but never take ownership of tending to them and healing them. And, and he said, you know, and it feels like corrective and it feels harsh a little bit when you say it, but he was just like, you alone are responsible for tending to your own wounds. And he said, you have one, you have one of two choices. You can either let it fester and get infected and really bring death to your life. Or you can recognize that, yeah, there was wrongdoing that happened, but I can't stay here. And I can't allow this to become the identity that I live under. And he, and he just, he's like, so you got it. You have one choice. You can let it fester, get infected and die from it. Or you can put some band-aids on it and you can tend to it. And so I would just encourage you, any listener, it's like, man, if you've experienced that, or you're just feel, you feel like you're stuck in that, I would just really encourage you to begin asking the Lord, God, how do I tend to this? What are the steps I need to take to find healing? Um, because when you start asking the right questions to the right person, like you said, Josiah, man, the Lord's faithful and he will always take care of you. He will, but you've got to be willing to let him and you've got to be willing to ask um, the right questions. And so yeah, I just encourage the listener, man, if you, if you've experienced that the Lord is merciful, he's faithful. People are people. And sometimes they do dumb things, but, but you've got to be the one to put the bandage on and choose to find some healing. So, yeah. 
Oh my gosh. That's so, so good. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Pastor Josh, I love that you went there. Cause even earlier in the episode, you said humanity behind ministry. And I think humanity behind just people just lives oh, yeah. each and every single day. So whether you're a leader, like you, like you said, or you've been hurt by the church or you've been hurt by individual in the church, there's healing, there's redemption. And, and what a great action step and challenge for all of us to take a personal inventory of like, who are we holding a grudge against and what are we unwilling to attend to in our own lives? Because I'm sure we all have something, right? It could be oh, yeah. maybe in the church, maybe outside of the church, family member, um, and God, like you said, God is the healer. He's the redeemer and the redemption can come through us tending to the wounds that are, you know, before us. So just idea of a quote you want to end on? I do. I think it's, it summarizes what we've all just been talking about. And C.S. Lewis wrote this in one of his books and he had gone through some grief and he said, I know Lord, why mm. you utter no answer. You are yourself the answer before your face questions die away what other answer would suffice? And um, this side of eternity, what I'm recognizing and realizing is we don't always get a complete answer. Um, and I trust that we will into eternity and, and God's presence has mm -hmm. the ability to heal, mm -hmm. has the ability to restore kind of, I, I picture just like a salve to an open wound and just cover up, heal, bless, and man. And so our prayer is, for you, if you're hurting, that you would seek the healer, mm -hmm. um, get to know him, trust again, and uh, know that we're for you, God's with you, and this is the Young Adults Today podcast.